Hello everyone, I'm back. After a whole day's work, programming, I'm programming. <coughs> yes. Um, yeah, so yesterday uh, I got a bit stuck in my refactoring where I reorganised the project into some files and then the thing didn't work anymore. And the, the reason it didn't, if you missed the reason why, was a silly thing. It was due to the fact that I put some code to jump around subroutines to jump to the start. I put a, just a jump, it's not code, I put a line in there to jump to the beginning of the, of the game. And the point is that meant the beginning of the game was no longer um, the beginning of the code which meant that the calculation for the length of the code was then shorter than it should have been, meaning that the file that's loaded, the cassette file that's loaded into the uh, emulator, um, was getting truncated because the operating system would prevent, um, it would just load the shorter amount and then stop which meant that the graphics didn't actually load into the Atom, which is why all the graphics were screwed up. Yeah, it took a bit to find this because it was not what I expected, but uh, it all made sense in the end, and as you see, we're, we're back. It's now working again, and, um, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> my script started up test.a instead of main.a, so the main program is now main file is about 600 lines which is going to be a little bit more manageable as I continue to work on the gameplay so now part of the gameplay that I've been working on recently is I want to have shots that is the one the ability the ability to shoot things you see because I mean it's not a video game if you can't shoot things, right? Um, num shots are zero at the moment, and I don't use that num shots. That's because those probably are in the sprites root um, file. Draw shots. So I think what I will do, what I need to do now is figure out how to get the the code for drawing shots to work properly. And uh, if I go back to main here and you see start is now at the beginning. What happened was this start was here and so didn't include the length of this part. Um, what I'm going to do is is going to clear the screen and then we're just going to go straight in to draw shots. And then we're going to jump halt. Usually I get at least someone by now, which means the algorithm is, is disliking me. I have a bad relationship with the algorithm. Let me check. Am I live? I am live. Well, it's also Friday, isn't it? Hey, Alan, thank you for saying hi. Good to see you again. I think I'm going to do, I never, when I start a stream, I don't usually sort of do any publicity stuff, but I'm going to do that now. I'm going to try sharing. Well, I tried it there. I pressed, well, you see, I go to the thing and I say share. And, and, it, and, and, it, and it doesn't share. It did nothing. Hang on, let me just send a message on Twitter where I... <laughs> Right now, streaming right now. It's 
So I, I didn't ask, but what? Or maybe I did and I forgot. What, what, uh, what do you do, Alan? Are you still programming? And what kind of programming? And so on. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm just posting, uh, sharing on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Sharing a post. Streaming live now. And then uh, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook. Oh, Go. I have never tried Go. What's, do you like it? Is it, would it be useful for other things as well? What's special, what's special about Go? That's, I, well, I, I don't know. So I've just done a bit of publicity, which I often don't bother with. Hang on, I just got to read my notifications on Twitter. That should be fun. Someone liked my reply. <laughs> All right. So anyway, at least said soon this mended. I think there. So what I'm going to do is try drawing the shots and um, all I've got is that little thing in here interfaces but no inheritance inheritance is a very dodgy thing in the end I think its actual real value is limited it, it, it's, it's it's that thing of the, even the people who give, the gang of four who gave recommendations or patterns on software development said favour uh, composition over inheritance. So it's like, in the end, inheritance became a mechanism for um, implementing, uh, implementing interfaces. So Java right, has got interfaces as well as inheritance. It doesn't support multiple inheritance, but it does support multiple interfaces. Um, the funny thing is, is that if you go and say, OK, you can get rid of inheritance, you just have interfaces, then where does the data go? And if you go object orientated, you put, you put the data and the interfaces or the methods together. Um, so is it not very object orientated? I don't know. I need to at some point. Or not. I mean, it's, it's like there's so many languages out there. In any, any case, um, enough of the enough, enough of this high level stuff back to 6502 assembly. Um, I can't, I try to draw the shots and I get nothing. So let's have a look. And here I was trying to hardwire it. I wanted to sprite 128 in X and zero in Y. Calculate the sprite address. Yeah, this was just totally broken and not working at all. So we're going to apply the rule here of do something that makes sense. You only coded in assembly for fun, not profit. Yeah. It's good, I think there, there should be more programming for fun, frankly. So, um, could you imagine though, if we took all the power that we assembly programmers can harness and we we put that to good use 
but I digress. So what I'm going to do is um, see if I can... Well, I've got a blank screen. I hate blank screens. It's just blank. Well, not just blank screen, but blank sprite isn't appearing. So I'm just going to do something just to load A, immediate minus one, store A at some address, 8400, return. I want to get a line on the screen, a dash on the screen. Even that didn't work, why not? Um, 717, I had an error. <laughs> Stray character, let's try that again. And, I, you see, I drew that. Yay! At least that makes sense, right? So what I could do is, since it was failing, completely failing to make anything appear at all, I could take those coordinates that I've... and. Right, low dex immediate zero. I'm going to use the, for the moment, the letter A sort of data structure stuff. I'm, I'm going to use I'm going to use the letter A to try and see if I can get the sprite address to work for my shot, which I'm trying to plot at 128 comma zero. In fact, let's try 108 one, uh, 96, which will put it in the middle of the screen. So I load 128, I store it in the X coordinate, 96 in the Y coordinate, and I calculate the sprite address. And in order to do that, I'm using address out, low, out, high. So the way this works is I need two bytes, which are defined here for internal calculation, and then it stores the low and high the low and high memory address in 8283. And then what I'm going to do is say, OK, I'm going to load the accumulator with minus 1. I'm going to load the wire register with 0. And then I'm just going to do a store uh, indexed indirect, um, which is uh, with the address dollar eight two because that's where it was being written to comma y y being zero. This should and 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 RTS, and this should make a mark in somewhere in the centre of the screen. Hey Philip Partridge, hello. Yeah, good to see, good to see you. I don't know if we've crossed our paths before, but you're more than welcome. And look, that worked. So at least that, that made sense, right? Because remember, when I'm doing this, I don't have a debugger and I don't even can't even print anything. Um, so it's always a case of doesn't work. Well, let's just do anything that does work. And um, then you build up from there. So because the point is, is that you, it's very difficult to debug anything if you've just got a blank screen all the time. Um, so. That's, that looks good. We'll try to do something else then. Now, if I load... Yeah. So, so, so OK, this means sprite address is working for our li my little test case here. Then what I do is I load the X coordinate of the sprite of the shot back into the accumulator and I end it with 7, 7 being the 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 for 3 bits at the end of 1. Why? It's 4 plus 2 plus 1, there's a 7. So those are the bottom 3 bits. And um, I store the bottom 3 bits in 84 because I will need them later. I transfer it to the X register where it's expected for the shot XOR with screen function or macro that I wrote. 
where you pass in how much you want the shot to be shifted over the bits on the screen. And shot XOR with screen takes uh, two from and X is the shift to and from two being uh, indirect. So it was the 8283 because when you look at this, it uses the same addressing mode here, this, this address mode here. So, um, and uh, from the shot bits, which is a table that I made of shot bits, that's really the rotation of the shot along the pixels. And so this should also plot, this should plot a, a shot in the middle of the screen. We'll see if this works, but I think last time I was trying to do this, that didn't, oh, now it works. Who knows why about three days ago or two days ago it didn't work. Ah, we're fine. I can relax now. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be fine. I have a shot in the middle of the screen. Well, I am doing this over um, the letter A, I suppose, as in the sprites X, H and Y, H. These, these the Y position and X position of the sprite are for the letter A, which I'm not drawing because I'm exiting the program straight after trying to draw the shot because, um, yeah, when you don't have anything to go on the debugging, this is a very common thing. You just sort of make it do one thing and then stop. Um, so if that is working, I think the thing I should do now is try to set up, you know, the the, the, the slots for all of the different sprites, right? Because the sprites are all, they all have um, a, it's like a pool, although it's permanent. Um, permanent pool. Um, so if I say number of shots are one, I'm just going to go for one shot for now. I have 10 letters, one ship and one shot. And the shot index, shots index, that's the index of the shots, the first shot, num letters plus num ship um, so this sh this should work I should be able to use shots index so what I do is I go back to my sprites uh, here's my drawing routine and instead of that I do exactly what I have here although why did I do there no no that's right that's right sorry I thought I did a stupid thing, but I didn't. I start with the end shot and I work backwards because I did that the same way everywhere else. So I take the number of shots, I add it to the shots index and I subtract with one. So this is the last shot, but there is only one uh, right now. This should just make a dot in the middle of the screen still. And, it's, and it is, that is working, so that's good. Um, and then we take the 128 store, right, this is hard wiring the position of the sprite. So now I get rid of that hard wiring and we'll see what we get. And it's still in the middle of the screen. Now why? Because it should be in the table over here. So what I've got are... And it's difficult to see this, as you know, but uh, let me put a comment in that might help. So this is A, the letter B, the letter C, the letter D, E. These are sprites. It goes up to J because that's the 10th letter. Then we have the ship. And then we have shot one. So in, in this way we can see the shot one is 128 comma 96 or the middle of the screen. Now I'm going to just test it. If I put zero in here this should put it at the left of the screen. <laughs> Right, without everything was making sense, now it doesn't make sense anymore. What happens if I put zero zero in here? 
Okay, I, I suspect that what must be wrong here is that I still have some other debugging code. It must be hardwired somewhere else. No, it's not. So, um, that is very odd. Well, we have to double check everything. Now, I f now I'm having deja vu. So, we, we look at this and we see that the first shot, the number of shots is one. Shot index is number of letters, which is 10, plus num ship, 11. The index of the first shot is 11. Num shots are 1. Low dex immediate, and I use the coordinates as indicated. by the X register and sprite address doesn't modify the X register. Oh, hang on. Oh. Oh, I've seen the problem. Now what I did was is I, I had this macro sprite address. Its purpose is to take the sprite address and put it somewhere. Um, and calculate the, the address of the sprite in video memory and store it somewhere for use. And so then to make it more general purpose, I split it off so I could specify out H high out, uh, the high byte and the low byte and put them anywhere. But you see what I did is I forgot that it's indexed with the X. So if X is equal zero, this works fine. But if X is not equal zero, it's not putting it where I say it was put it. In this case, it will be putting it 11 bytes further. And that is the problem. Um, now, I think since we're talking about macros anyway, I think the best thing that I can do here is re revert this back to the way I had it before. Well, no, I can leave it like this. It's fine. It's just I need a different macro for a, a more general use because this is designed to update the sprites. So it's like it takes all the, sp the logical sprites that I have in the game. They have you know, variables, and it, it's done like this, rather than in a kind of a structure as you used to, because I need to be able to index into this, and if I put all of, all of the sprites uh, data, like the position and velocity and so on, one after the other like this, like this, if I, t if I did that and put them like this, then the X register, which I'd be using as an index to say which sprite I'm trying to work on, that would sort of add, I don't know, 16, 32, and the X register only has eight bits, so then I would only be able to have like eight sprites. Um, so I can have up to 256 sprites, memory, memory permitting, if I stripe the structures. So what I have is an array of all the X coordinates, an array of all the Y coordinates, and that's arrays of the low bytes and the high bytes, and the array of the velocity low and high bytes in X and in Y, and everything else that I need. And um, then I can refer to them all just by using uh, the X index. So that's why it's sort of in this form, which is difficult to, you know, annoying perhaps uh, for a human to read, but it's better for the assembly code um, and um, what but what I want to do here is make a version of this macro I'm just going to call it uh, sprite address 2 that doesn't all it does is it doesn't 
store out comma x. So this is allows me to say, you know, to put the output anywhere I like. And I need to change my shop routine to use sprite address two. And now I think it will work. Actually, it did draw a pixel there. It's being overwritten by the uh, halt sort of indicator, but there, it, it, but at zero zero. Yes, that's right because it says zero zero because I made both of them zero. So if I go and do like ninety six, no zero comma ninety six, I should now. Yes, it's working. And um, that makes sense. Okay, so I've got that solved. It now means that I have a way of drawing sprites. I draw the shots. Now, what I want to do is have more shots. So let's test that out. So I might want four shots. And then to be able to see where they are, I need to put something in here. So I could do 118 and 90 and, I don't know, 180, 180, um, and 60 and, I don't know, uh, 103. It really doesn't matter. I've got four shots. I just want them to be different places on the screen and now when it execute I need to fix this so that it works so this should be plotting each one starting with X starting with the end one do the plot it stores that counter of the, the pointer to, to the one that we're currently working on on in 84 I decrement 84, I load 84 into the accumulator, I transfer it to X for use in the next loop. I compare it with the shots index and branch of carry set, which should work to draw all of them. I want four. You know what's going to happen now, don't you? There are four dots! This is good. This makes this makes sense. Those are my shots in my game now. Um, I think we're good to start turning on the rest of the game again because I think this is now working well. And because the shots share the same um, logic code. The shots share the same logic code as the sprites. I should be able to get them moving pretty quickly. So let's look at the main here. Uh, I'm just doing draw shots and halt here. I'm just going to get rid of that so it starts executing the you know, initialization code, um, randomizing the positions of the letters. Um, which it does just for the letters, initialize the ship, draw sprites. I need to do draw shots. Now, inconsistent naming convention. And uh, if I draw the shots, uh, what do we get now? So I have my four dots and the game is working over the top. You see the magic of the, I'm not redrawing those dots. I get them for free until I move them. That's the, that's the beauty of XOR plotting. Um, and um, so, but if I want to get them to start moving, I need to put an, a draw shots thing. Ha. 
Uh, it was going too well. Yeah. Yeah. Problem I've got now is that in you know for because the acorn atom it doesn't have ported memory to the VDU there's this problem that if you uh, access video memory while it's drawing the screen you get noise so there's a whole really all the complexity of the sprite engine comes into efficiently rotating the sprites across the bits and then storing them in a draw buffer for each sprite to minimize these cycles to actually blit the sprites to the screen to be in the V blank period. Um, the logic for the sprites are using the same logic as for the shots. Well this means that I have no way of clearing the shots because I'm not using the sort of double buffer pro approach that I am using with the sprites because I thought I'd be clever and say, I'll just draw them on the fly. Well, I mean, that's fine, and I can, because they're just quick. I'm only plotting four bytes instead of 16, you know. Uh, but the problem is that um, because it moves outside of the V blank, it sort of repositions the sprites outside of the V blank blank period. When I'm in the V blank period, I don't have the information anymore to be able to clear the sprite off its previous position because being exclusive or plotting, I have to remember where the, how I plotted it before in order to unplot it. So the way the sprites work with that is that when I plot a sprite, I go, here's the sprite data, it needs to be aligned on pixel 3, so that means the sprite needs to be shifted, say, two positions to the right. So let's do that, and it, sh it shifts the source data. And then it makes a copy of that sprite for the sp sprite, you know, graphics, into the slot for a particular sprite, any of the letters, for example. And um, it does that, and there are two of them. So it does that for the front buffer, right? But the back buffer has still got on it w what it had for the previous draw, which it then uses as a clear. So when it, the V-sync occurs, it plots both. And so that causes the previous position to be cleared and then to, and replaced with the new position as if quickly as possible, because I've got this tight, tight delay. I mean, so I moved away from that uh, just to, for because I wanted to be clever, but now I find oh, I'm stuck. So either I have to remember the previous position, and then I can use that. I can say, yeah, use the previous position, or I use something else. I suppose I... Yeah, I think it makes it complicated with the sprites, because what happens is that to save copying memory, which would be very expensive on a, you know... Um, it uh, swaps which ones it uses, so it's sort of like draw in here and then in the next frame is prepare the next frames draw in here and then on vsync it goes draw both and it goes boom, swaps. And so I have to every time flip between buffer one and buffer two, really, really complicated. Um, what's the get, what, what's that much to be gained? I think I'm not I mean, I could say in terms of efficiency, I could probably make it even faster, but I've got to have a little bit of pragmatism here. So what I'm going to do is something else. Which is what? Well... I wonder if it'd ever, ever be uh, useful to have the previous positions of the sprites, actually. I could do that. Hold the previous position of the sprite. I certainly could do that solution for the slots, is, uh, for the shots. But for the sprites, I'm not using that, but would I use it in the future? Possibly. Um, uh, it's not really 
So what I have then is a different data structure for the shots than I have for the sprites. That's annoying. I don't want to waste memory. Um, on the other hand, ha, what am I saying? I'm wasting memory already in the sense that the shots also have all the other rubbish that goes on with a full sprite. And I can use, I have the whole draw buffer. I've got, uh, yeah, each shot has unused right now all of this memory. Well, not all of it, but the draw buffer is 16 bytes. Draw buffer 2 is 16 bytes. The draw address is... Uh, two bytes. Draw address two is two bytes. So what I could do is store, it's like a union, I, I can share, I can have the shots use this memory somehow. And there is a way that I can do that in assembly. Because I could say this is the draw buffer one but I could also say shot previous um, well actually I, I, I can keep the drawer address in here so what I could I could say shot previous address and now both of these have the same so it's like a union. So both of these have the same address. So they're sharing this, these, this memory here. And that's great. So basically what I'll do is uh, use the draw address. The only other thing I need to remember though, in order to get this to work, is I need to remember what the shift amount was. So I need... Um, or I, or I use a draw buffer, actually. Let me have a look at that. XOR. Oh, I just do an XOR with screen directly. So I think what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll prolong in uh, draw address to. So the shop previous address. previous draw address let me right and over here shot previous shift so I can use those and um, because there's one for every single sprite uh, and therefore one for every single shot and we, we will try. So what happens then is when I draw a shot, I must first clear the previous position. Oh, maybe I could do draw shots. Um, uh, Hard thinking here. I think I could do that. I could. What I could do. I could do the following. Let's, I'm going to try and put it all into one routine. So when I call draw shots, it will clear whatever previous shots there were, and then draw the new positions of the shots. And it's a different structure to the letters, but the letters are highly optimized. So I think it's, it's acceptable. First thing I need to do is ask the question, is there anything to clear? And the way that I'm going to know that there's something to clear, we're gonna to have to keep notes, a bit more notes here, i.e. is previous draw address 
not null. So um, I can actually just test one byte of the two bytes um, of the address, the top byte, because I know that the address of video memory is at 8, 0. So basically it has to be non-zero. So what I can do is access the one that I decided to do that I forgot what it was. Oh, it, where, where, up here, there we go. The, the shot previous draw address. What we do is we do load a shot previous draw address comma x. Oh, previous draw address plus. Not plus one. <laughs> it's, uh, I have 16 sprites, it's plus 16. Sprites and shots. I know it's terrible, but there's nothing really you can do about it in this scenario where you're so, things are tight like this. Shot previous draw address plus 16. This is the high byte of the previous draw address. And um, the low byte would be plus zero. Right. So if this branch if equal dot some label dsh2, okay, branch if equal dsh2, and so it will d dsh2, it'll jump here. So now we need to clear the sprite. Um, now to do that, I need to take that previous address, which I know is, is these two here. And in fact, I actually have one, don't I already? I can store the one that I've already got into the address, which I know I'm putting in eight two and eight three. So I'd store that in eight three, which is the high byte. And then I need to load the low byte, which is that plus zero, and I store that in eight two. See what I'm doing? And so now eight two and eight three has got the previous draw address in there. And then I need to, oh, that's really simple. I, I have a thing I said previous shift. So I load the previous shift comma X, and that's loaded into the um, a register um, and then in order to do the draw with screen thing I'm going to have to transfer it to the X register which means I'm going to lose my X register and so for this reason I'm going to change the way I do this loop because it's, it's annoying me. I'm going to move it directly into 84 store dollar 84 which zero page byte that I'm going to use to store the loop counter so this is now it, it used to be in the X register but the X register would get destroyed by the things I'm calling so I'm just putting it in zero page memory um, and now when I want to use it I'll have to load it into the X register well I need it here so I do load X dollar 84 and then that's fine, and this is fine, as this will work as before. And then now I have the uh, shift amount that I, from the previous draw, the, sh the amount to, that it was shifted, I put that into the accumulator. I transfer the, the accumulator to X, the old tax instructions. Now it's in the X register where I can, I don't need to calculate the a screen address anymore. I just do XOR with screen. That should undo the draw. Done. And at this point then we do the draw. And the nice thing about this is that it should mean that I don't need to do an initial draw of the sprite. It's like it's the well, first time it's drawn it will not try to clear a sprite that doesn't need clearing and then create a mess on the screen. So, uh, .dsh2, this is my, it, when it gets to here, basically means now plot the sprite properly. I need to load x back from 84 because I lost it up here, uh, right? 
Um, that's needed for the sprite address to function, which is calculating from the sprite uh, coordinates of sprite index in X and stores the result in 8283. And then I load the X coordinate of the sprite at mask off those bits that the, keep the bottom three bits. I don't need to store, save this because I saved it already up there. I need to do a tra tax instruction again as before so that I'm, I'm doing um, the draw. So it's drawn it. Then I can decrement 84. And what I have to do is load 84. I don't need the tax instruction anymore. I just need to check to see if I'm at shot index or not. Branch if carry set dot dsh1, so it goes all the way back up here. In theory, this should work. Um, now, the, the pointers are initialized to zero automatically. Um, I don't know if I'm calling draw shots every frame yet. I'm not, but I will in a moment. But first, before I do anything else, I want to make sure that nothing is broken. Uh, in fact, it won't compile. I thought that might happen. I have uh, target out of range uh, on sprites.a line 770, which we can look at here. Where are we? 770. It's too big a jump to get back there, probably because, again, I'm crossing, crossing a boundary. So. Well, you, we can do branch if carry set DSH3. Um, and then jump to DSH1. And here is my dot uh, DSH3. So jumper. Branch around a jump, which is how you get around that. Um, let's see. Okay, that's working. And I have a dot on the screen. I don't know if I should have a dot on the screen or not. I need to confirm what that's about. Ah, well... <laughs> There should be four dots. There is one dot. But I should have seen four, so I probably have a bug in here then. Uh, it's to do with the looping. Uh, probably not. Maybe I have this branch of carry set clear wrong. What's the rule? You can use branch of plus or branch of minus, but they I don't like to do those because and, unless I'm using signed values. As I'm treating this as an unsigned value, I have to check the carry flag. When I do compare with shot index, I'm subtracting shot index, which in this case would be 11 from whatever the index of the current sprite that I'm doing is. So while I'm doing the loop, I'm subtracting a smaller number from a bigger number. So it's not going to go below zero. That is, it's not going to borrow at the end of the subtraction, which means that the carry flag is going to be set because it's cleared on a borrow. So if the carry flag is set, it means that we continue. I had it the wrong way around. So because I had it the wrong way around, it was only drawing one. I think we shall see four, four dots now. Yes, very good. Right. So we've got four dots. It means I've got four four shots. Um, if I got this right, I should be able to make the move. Big moment here. So in what direction and velocity will they move? Um, we can look at the velocities of these here. So that one, two, three, four, Five, see, uh, they're a bit misaligned in here. Just sort of roughly line them up. Okay. L roughly, roughly line them up. Line them up. Roughly line them up is not good enough. 
In fact, it might make sense for me to just do this instead. These are the four shots. Um, I'll just do these for the coordinates. So that one is like up to J and then the ship, pling eight, pling. <laughs> uh, it's easier than saying exclamation mark. And um, so what have we got? That looks right. Uh, that looks right to me. I want to do the same thing with the um, velocities. So we have one, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <clears throat> Try that again. Comma in the wrong place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, ah. Oh. I don't need to do that with the images. So these are the vol the velocities I'm trying to set here: V and W, high and low bytes. Um, I need to do put these in as well. So what have we got? We've got velocities. So for velocity in the those are low, these are the high one um, in the X uh, minus one zero zero because I want them moving in different directions so I've done one minus one zero zero high byte of the x velocity and if we do the high byte of the y velocity we'll do zero zero one minus one and that should make them all move in four different directions so let me just make sure that compiles no five hundred and sixty one What went wrong? Uh, stray comma. There's another stray comma here. Try again. Okay, that compiles. Hello. What, what's, what's going on here then? So we still got four. They're not moving yet because I haven't put the um, the update. Uh, the draw. The draw function. Draw shots. So after all of that, after the V-Sync, we draw shots. Now, I need to check if the... Oh, gosh. Update sprites routine. If this is set up in such a way that it updates also the shots. Num entities, it does. I set it up so it will do both shots and sprites. They might move. I love this. It's like a, they might move. Will they move? Oh, yes, they move. <laughs> Imperfectly, but they move. <laughs> We've got we've got some problems. Um, one of them is is that we've got residue on the screen that shouldn't have happened, and another one is it looks like they they distort in some way. I have to draw. I have to switch it to low. 
Yeah. So the... Oh, look at that. They're kind of half size. It's sort of... But you notice that they are half depending on which way they're moving. So like the ones that are moving horizontally are sort of two pixels high and one pixel wide. Exactamundo Allen, yes. They are XORing themselves out because there is a, um, a, a an error in the drawing. It's almost like the, for some reason, which I've got to figure out now, um, right at the start when they were drawn, they ended up cancelling each other out and being, like, moves along and then it cancels. It's almost like the first time it didn't cancel properly. And the problem is that once you've done that, when it carries on doing this, it will just keep on cancelling itself out because the, the, the sequence is wrong. And you can see that that's why that's what's happening because the... The horizontal ones are vertical, so they're being cancelled out horizontally, and the vertically moving ones are being cancelled out vertically. So, but I'm quite happy that it's it's sort of almost working, um, which is better. I mean, it's something to go on, you know, like, oh, they look, that movement looks so smooth. You should see what it's like on the original hardware. Oh, rock solid. Perfect, perfect movement. Oh well. Anyway, um, I, I that that's pretty good, but we need to figure out why I have residue, why it does this cancelling. So, um, let me just check a few things out. They're going. What's this draw shots? Okay, I used to put them there. Yeah, I think it doesn't matter where they go. They can go there, there, they go. It doesn't matter. Is there any more draw shots? There's just one here. Oh, do you remember I drew the shots? You know why? I was following the same pattern of draw sprites. I don't need to do that with the with the shots because the shots don't need that. So I think it's literally that. I think it'll work now. Go. Oh, you disappoint me. I was pretty hopeful that that would have been it. Well. Let's, I need to examine, examine the, I need to examine this draw shots routine a bit more. So, okay, is there anything to, oh, what did I forget to do, everybody? <laughs> so it's the same mistakes I make when I'm programming in any language, the, the, the same patterns. In this case, it's like, yes, we draw the previous, previous position. We draw the previous position. We draw with the previous shift. Great. Did you save the previous position and the previous shift? No. <laughs> That's the weird thing. It almost works without it. But that's because it happens to be moving one pixel at a time and it happens to be two pixels wide. Otherwise, you would end up with a trail. I think I'll try that and see if I'm right. If I... So that just makes uh, Alan even more right than he was before. Even more so. It's cancelling out. Uh, if I go and put, say, two pixels, my prediction is... That at this velocity, it will actually draw draw lines. Uh, ooh, ooh, I like that. There's something nice about that, isn't there? Sort of 
a snaky vibe, kind of Tron vibe to it. It could be a 1970s ident, yeah, absolutely. It's kind of hypnotic. The thing is that that graphic, I mean, forget the letters for a minute, that, that, that line thing there is so, so cheap. So cheap to do. It looks, impre it looks impressive, but it's... There's only drawing, it's only plotting four, four squares. So you could probably have a hundred of those going at the same time. Well, maybe not a hundred, but you could have a, quite, a, quite a lot of them going at the same time. And that, but they clear themselves because it's XOR plotting. That's the wonder of XOR plotting. It's like... I kind of miss the fact that we rarely use these tricks in modern games. It's the, we've, we've become dictated to by our engines. I mean, you could make a game with that. Kind of... You, can, you know, here's a game. Is is this could be part of the game? It is part of the game already. Well, this is for Letteroids Two. It's like okay, right now it won't crash if I get if I hit them, but I could make it so it did. And so then you've got the added thing that you you have to you have to navigate these. You have to navigate. Look at that. So it's like. I'm pretending as though I'm not, I'm, here we go, no crash, it's another game. And that's how sometimes you come up with ideas for a game, you go, yeah, you know that, you know that thing there, that bug that you had, and it's like, I want to see if I can fly, oh, I hit the H, oh, I want to do it now, I want to fly between them. Oh, I just clipped it. <laughs> that, that hit it. It is. It's, it's XOR light cycles. Coming to an acorn atom near you soon. Oh, oh, nearly, nearly got it. Look, there you are, you see? It's an original game. This game, you're looking at a game that's never been made. Anyone want some innovation? I did it! Yes! I got to the bottom of the screen. Look at that. <laughs> anyway, never mind. Uh, I'm having more fun with the, with the error than I am with the success. Um, I worked out what the problem was. What was it? Oh, yeah, that. Um... I'll put it back to, no, I'll leave it like that for now. I'll leave it like that, but I need to fix it so the sprite, so the shots actually work the way they're supposed to. And to do that, I need to remember the previous draw address and also the previous shift. So, what we do here is, I calculated the sprite address and then I need to do load a dollar eighty two, store a. Um, store a. I'm just checking to make sure that the X register is is good at that point. Shot previous, draw address. This one. And we're going to do that with eighty three. Shot previous address plus 16. So that's basically save the address and then we need to do load a uh, the shift bits. You have to mask them because we just need to know how many times to shift. And that shift value is what I need to store in shot previous shift so now they are saved 
Tying teas. <laughs> they going oh, like teas, aren't they? Ta-da! I now have shots. I don't know how smooth it looks on the video. And, you know, on the stream. I've got no idea how smooth it looks on the stream, but... They look, it looks fast, it looks fast, but there's, the thing is, it's not actually that fast, it's just moving at, they're moving at uh, two pixels per um, frame. And um, the point is that one of the advantages of low resolution graphics is that you can do speed. Like it, it, it's, if if you had to move something across the screen to get from one end of the screen to the other, a lower resolution, you can do more. But um, I mean, in this day, we just oh, and th but there's something else as well is that because this is perfect movement. In I tell you, the monitor, the emulator here is pretty good. It's got a um. It's got a very good V-Sync lock. So this is probably not coming across on the stream, but on here it's like I'm not seeing any jitter in the movement of those dots. Well, when you're moving in sync with a TV that is displaying, say, 50 times a second, and then you're drawing at 50 times a second, you can go as fast as you like, and you will not see any... Well, I'll show you. you I know, it's difficult on the stream. You can't see this. It's, this is one of those things that's really difficult to talk about or show. Um, but um, if I, you have to trust me that this is the case. If I, <laughs> if you don't, if you cannot infer it from what you're looking at here, I'm going to multiply the speed by four, and it will be just as smooth. As long as you track the object that's moving with your eyes. And if you keep your eye stationary, those dots as they move, they'll create individual images on your retina. Which makes sense. If you don't move your eye, it's going to go chick, 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 and then you, you'll see individual dots. But normally what we do is we track the movement of the dots with our eyes. I talked about this the other day. Um, that because you track with your eye, you are making sure that the thing that you're following ends up on the same spot on your retina, you know, all the time. But if you display it twice in the same position and then twice in the next position and twice in the next position, and this is kind of what happens in film, the projections in the cinema when they they're projecting movies, they the movie might be 24 frames a second. They may be though flickering the light at 48 or even faster, and it's that that creates that flickering that you get. Because what happens is, as your eye is following the edge of a building in a pan, or you're following a dot, because you display it twice. The first one is stamped onto your retina in one position, but your eye has moved so that the second one that is tr supposed to be in the same place isn't in the same place anymore because you have moved your retina. <laughs> and what you get to two images. Um, but that that's, um, that's a, a hobby horse of mine because it took me a really long time to figure that out. And by the sounds of what they try to do in the cinema, Nobody else has figured it out either. They say, so you put you need a faster frame rate. No, the faster frame rate is not going to help you. you. You are not going to get perfectly smooth movement if you go to 48 frames per second unless you resist the temptation of flickering the light source at 96. So if you go at 48 frames per second in your film, but the light is being turned on and off at 96, you will get exactly the same problem. 
Honestly, I know you don't believe me, but honestly, you will. I mean, I found this uh, in the early 2000s when I got a fancy new CRT monitor, TV, whatever, that ran at 120 hertz. I said, this is going to be brilliant. Everything's going to be smooth as silk. And I played a game on it, 120 hertz. And uh, it wasn't. I was still seeing the same problem. That's because the game was running at 60 and the monitor was running at 120. You see the problem? <laughs> anyway. Look. I right, see. What's happening there is this is getting so fast that your eye can't track it. And because your eye can't track it, it gives up. It stops trying to track it. And um, the end result is you're seeing the individual dots. So, at least for me, I'm seeing lots of separated dots. Now, try something. Again, I'm not so sure if it will work through the stream, but it's worth a try. Ah, that's a very good question. You got me with that one. The Acorn Atom was running at 50 hertz. The monitor's running at 60. It shouldn't be perfectly smooth. I need to check what the emulator does. You've got a very, very good point. Um, but to finish the point I was just making, if I, if I make an effort to track one of the dots so that my eye is moving along with it, then I don't see the separation of the dots as much. You've got a very good point. I'm, I don't know. It's like, how can it be locked? Let me, let me put it back to... I'm going to have to figure that out because that's a mystery. I'll put it back to two. And even if my monitor was at 50, it's like, what's this stream at? I, I, it has to be redrawing this at 60. This is important because it will change the speed of the game when I go and play it on the real hardware. I need to look at the notes for a tomulator on this. I would imagine it would be slightly jumpy because the, you know, you're, you're, you see, this is not very well appreciated, but the problem that we have is there's a loop which is the game loop. There's a loop which is the, the graphics loop inside the emulator. There is the the refresh of the screen. There is the refresh of the encoder that's capturing the screen to go down the stream. There is the your monitor. <laughs> so your monitor could be running at 72. The, the thing could be being um, sampled at 60. The game could be running at 50. It's a mess. It's a complete and utter mess. Uh, and what's... Um, you get this problem with just also footage in general. It's like any 24 frames per second converted to 30 frames per second in America or 25 frames per second in, in for PAL in the UK. And it's a mess. Because what you get are these jitters. What we have these days is uh, sophisticated interpolation algorithms that can be used to try and, and get rid of this. And TVs have them even built in. But they're weird. It's weird because um, when I was in Italy, there was a film on, it was like some classic, it was uh, like a Ben-Hur type classic, and there were all these really famous old actors. And the thing had been either it was restored or, 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 you know, improved, I don't know, and it was running at 60 FPS. It was not running at 60 FPS probably in the broadcast, but the TV was upscaling the, 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 the time resolution, you know, and it was perfectly smooth. It's like... And so suddenly you could see every feature, everything in the face, all the rest of it, when people were moving, because there wasn't any of this uh, double imaging problem, you know, there's the stuttering or whatever you want to call it. Um, and the problem was, I was looking at it and going, I thought he died. <laughs> 
like 50 years ago. It was really weird because these people were, look like they could have been filmed recently. So it's very surreal. You know, it was the strangest thing. Anyway, um, it started flickering at my end because sometimes it it doesn't the end the emulator engine seems to lose sync. I I um, want to check atomulator frame rate. I checked on my. Add checkbox color board 50. I don't know. It's it's too. The thing is, this is too esoteric. Even though it's, it's you know, I hate, this is an esoteric thing I'm talking about when it should be central. It's so important, but nobody. There's I guess there's no money in it. I don't know. Let me check. I have color board. Snow full screen color board PAL 50 hertz. I'm not in PAL. And there we see it. I've just switched it to PAL and it's slower. And if I, if I switch it to, if I turn PAL off, it's faster. I turn PAL on, it's slower. And not only is it slower, but now it, there's a jitter. Because what you've got is once at one every five frames it goes, huh? It actually probably jumps or skips a frame. I mean, the emulator is trying to draw at 50 frames per second, but my monitor is updating at 60. Um, it's a nightmare. So I just need to bear this in mind when I'm playing the game. If I want to have the if I want it to look nice, I can turn off PAL and now it's nicely in synchronization with my monitor. But when I go and play it on the genuine hardware, it's going to be slower. I don't know, is my answer. I, I think the point is that if the video circuitry is set up to work at 60 hertz then when you do a v-sync we can find out sorry i know this isn't actually well it's it's interesting stuff so i'm going to um i have a way that we can profile this to find out I put in a loop here for the purpose of this very thing because I knew it was going to... No, it's uh, uh, just a, a delay loop. So if I put this delay loop in... We can see some bands on there. And I think the band that we're looking at is all the time it takes to draw the sprites which I know is a lot of sprites, but they are time sliced. Um, this is Atomulator. Because I put a delay after the V-Sync, it gives us some visibility on how much CPU it takes. So this, where this starts drawing is directly related to the speed of this loop. So what I'm going to do is change it to uh, from, because we're currently on NTSC, so I'm going to change it to PAL. My prediction is it, it will not change that gap, but the game will run slower. No, that's confusing me. We have no noise. I didn't expect that. Maybe it doesn't support snow in... I've got a feeling it doesn't support snow in um, PAL mode. 
I just took the, I turned off the colour board. Which is, is more in keeping with how it was. I didn't have a colour board when I made it. Um, snow. Okay, the, the way to guarantee you get snow is you turn off V-Sync. That's interesting. I didn't expect that. You can have snow. I think it might be that I just got more V-Sync because the frame is slower, so you get a you get a bigger. Oh, that means I could have eight sprites instead of six. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't take that into account. Oh, come on. Yeah, I need to make my um, delay loop bigger. But that sort of answers the question, so it's got me a bit confused. Oh. Okay. Bear with me a moment. I think we can still do this test. So with... If I crash the ship... Crash, please. All right. My thing about, yeah, that band will, sh will should be independent of the frame rate was nonsense because the V-Sync happens at the bottom of the screen and when you've, you're you doing PAL, because it's a slower frame rate, you have a bigger V-blank period. So it was actually that V-blank period was absorbing the whole um, thing. So I'm now doing it on PAL, if I change it to NTSC, it will move down. But to gauge how much CPU has changed is how thick this bar is, because this is the amount of time it's taking to draw the screen. But bear in mind that even this as a measure is a bit odd because, um, you know, the screen is slower. The scan is slower, so it's a bit confusing. So I think we could expect it to be slightly wider. Oh, it's, there's no difference, pretty much. In fact, actually in PAL, it seems to be slightly smaller. Correct. That's it. Yes. The answer to your question is no, it doesn't change the CPU speed at all. Proof. Proof is, this is NTSC at 60 FPS. The band is wider than when I switch it to... Um, no, that is PAL. No. All right, hang on, thinking. It's inconclusive. I don't know. I think it, in theory it's it should be the same speed for the CPU but a different speed for the video circuitry so that when you wait for the V-blank or the time periods between V-blanks are greater. That was certainly true with the Hardware. So on hardware, that's true. How the emulator behaves, I'm not sure. I mean, from what I'm seeing, I think it's the same. I got it all wrong there, pal. Oh, thank you. Hi there, Refly. <laughs> that's uh, thanks for the pun of the day. So yeah, what you would have with any games that were made in the U in Europe it, when they were played on. America, in America, they would run 20% uh, faster. Unless they, the compensation was made for it. And the problem there is that if you did that compensation, you'd end up with jerky graphics. There was never any solution. It's a really tough, really difficult problem. Anyway, like, enough of that. We'll get back to... 
but all very, very interesting, I think. At least I find it interesting. The most interesting thing I find about it is how it's never talked about. That's the most interesting thing. <laughs> but anyway. So um, I think I've got it in NTSC mode again. Yeah. Let's continue. So I, ha I have I have shots, which is great. So um, how can I disable the shots? Well, there's a disable flag. So I know I have those. Disable the uh, sprite flags. So to disable the sprite, I need bit three. Um, so what I will do is this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. That's the ship. These are the sprites. Bit three is four. Bit three is eight. Sorry. Bit three set would be eight. So if I put eight, 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 it will disable my sprites. But it has drawn them. That's disappointing. Why? Why has it drawn them? Well, because I didn't dis I didn't put the code in to disable the sprite if it is disabled. So in here we do the load X, I need to load that uh, sprites flags up, comma x, and then we do uh, and immediate eight, and we do branch if oh there are four sprites. Yes, we uh, <laughs> welcome to the four sp four sprite party. <laughs> I did that joke in a big way earlier. You know I did. How could I resist it? Technically, there are four shots. Um, but <laughs> what, what I'm going to do is um, and immediate 8, which is bit 3, and branch if not equal, which means the sprite was disabled. Come on. Thank you. Disabled. Um, here, because I have to skip it. Dot DSH4. Uh, I bet you that's going to go over them. The branch is going to be too long. Now, look, like I said, a target out of range. 753. Target out of range here. So what I'll need to do is branch around. I'll do branch if equal DSH. <laughs> Five, and we have to jump to DSH four, and now they are disabled. So wouldn't it be great if I could shoot? Because that's what what we need to have here. I press some button to be decided. Probably the Alt key here. And I want to shoot. Now, I'm very close to doing that. Let's start with... Um, we'll start with uh, detecting the press of the shoot button. Now, where did I detect key presses? Let's have a look. B0... Oh, search for B00 here. Right. Now... I'm using the control key and the shift key. There are three keys that have dedicated control lines. And I can't remember. Where they are. I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm reading the Acorn Atomic 
theory and practice book. There it is on page 194. This is the very book I learned programming in 6502 assembler in, with this book, not this physical book, but this book. And um, the control key, shift key, but we want the repeat key. The repeat key is on port B002 bit 6. B002 port 6. B002 pulse. Okay, so what we'll need to do is in the update ship routine, um, right, and here we'll just do a JSR to um, handle shooting. Or let's just call it ship shooting. So um, I'll make a new routine here, ship shooting. <laughs> Alan, yes. Yes, absolutely. The, um, the problem was the, 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 the reading of keyboards is problematic because, you know, the in part it's also the reason why the, the, the I would choose like simple control scheme because the problem is that you want to have buttons that you can press independently of each other. And this is going to be really interesting, right? Because in this day and in this world where people play on their PC and they're doing all these fancy sort of multi-key presses on their keyboard, there is a problem that exists to this day with keyboards unless the keyboard has been designed specifically to overcome this limitation. All of the keys are on a matrix, right? And the matrix is such that if you push down, say, four keys, there are four keys. If you push down, in fact, I think it's if you push down more than two keys, what starts happening is that you get ghost keying because the electricity through the matrix could take can go backwards through the keys and so what you end up with is as if more keys were pressed than they really are. In order to get around this problem you need to put diodes um, on the keys which makes the thing a lot more expensive. Um, it's funny how we, th th this never gets talked about. I'm just going to see what the state of play is these days with that. So anyway what this means is that if you imagine that you have a keyboard that has like eight lines to read the keys and eight lines to write to them, so what you do is you select a row and then you read the columns. It's something like that, but I don't know for in fact what the arrangement is on a traditional like 102 keyboard key key keyboard. Um, it, it it matters which keys you use. Because if you select the right keys, you can minimise or get rid of the ghosting. Um, and um, that's basically what I was trying to do. Now, the reason why the shift and control keys are have their own uh, lines is because you are going to get ghosting 
if you do, let's take for example on the PC keyboard, you do Control Shift Alt. So you've pressed three keys down. And you're going to get ghosting when you press those or you press a fourth if you have picked the wrong keys. So the Control, in fact, actually looking at a keyboard, we've got um, probably eight, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight maybe nine, two of them joined together. Uh, because you have these silly Windows keys. Oh, look at this, there's two Windows keys. So actually you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have the left shift and the right shift. I, I, it, it's possible those are not all on their own control lines. All right, but can virtually guarantee that Alt will be, Control will be, and Shift will be on their own control lines. That is that they, you know, they're not going to call cause as much ghosting because they're on one, they're on different rows. If you follow my drift, and um, I'm just going to look this up and see if. You know, because everybody uses their key keyboards, don't they? I pay good money for your keyboards. Are gaming keyboards protected against key ghosting? Do key do gaming keyboards have anti ghosting? And yes, and it's, ma it's mainly used for gaming. Anti-ghosting is a keyboard feature that ensures that each key is registered properly even when multiple keys are pressed at the same time. So, I'm going to just see if, if you go and look at gaming keyboard, if they talk about this. Because, I, I don't know, I, I'm playing um, uh, Hogwarts Legacy on just this normal PC keyboard. The problems the game designers have, you've got to design for that. So guess what happens? Our gameplay gets simplified to take into account the fact that we don't have control over the keyboards that people use. N key rollover. Well, N key rollover would be a slightly different thing, but to achieve N key rollover, you need to have anti-ghosting. Um, so, gaming keyboard, Amazon. And um, I just, I'm just curious, if we take the, I don't know, random one. Steel Series Apex 3 RGB gaming keyboard. 10 zone RGB illumination. Premium magnetic wrist rest. I want to know, does it have anti-ghosting? Amazon Choice. Ghosting. It says anti-ghosting gaming grade. So there it is. It is, it is a thing. It also has N-key rollover, 24 keys. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, that's good. But this this just reminds me that I probably want to get a better keyboard. Um, <laughs> get a better keyboard. It's important. Anyway, um, never mind that distraction. We'll come back to this. So, um, not that I mind distractions. I love them. Just... Distract myself to death one day. Ship shooting. What I want to do is load immediate. No, a load dollar B002. Do you remember B002? That's the thing. Bit six. Yeah, bit six. And I know. And immediate um, four zero is bit six. And then branch if um, uh, it, it, it 
if it's it's cleared when the button is pressed. So it, you branch if not equal means that it's not pressed. Branch if not equal SS1. We'll do SS1 and then here we'll do jump halt. Is it good then? It's not just hype, you know, all that steel series. You recommend it? Well, that's good enough for me. It seemed to get good reviews there. So. It's just I, I, laugh, I, I laugh at the way they, they call these things. Can't we just say someone sells something and say, it's darn good? Or I will settle for it works. Um, before RGB became cool. All right. So now I shall press, now I shall press nothing because I ran out of fuel. Now I shall press the button that hopefully halts the game. That's it. So that worked. It is successfully detecting pressing of the repeat button. All right, now what do we do? We want to shoot something. So I um, will shoot it anywhere. We'll just enable the sprite first. I'll a sprite. I need two sprites for the ship. We'll figure out the logic for that in a minute. But what I'll do is load the sprites flags, sprites flag, sprites flags, comma um, for the shots index. So this would be the first. plus shots index, sorry. Right, so that's loading the sprites flags for the first shot. And then we will and it so we don't modify the other bits with, and it's bit three, which is at eight, and uh, with eight, but I need to do the inverse of eight. It's annoying. I don't know. So what's annoying is I have to reverse the bits in my head. I don't know if the oh maybe ah because maybe the the assembler um, might have a not function. Maybe it's that. That be the reverse. No, that would be exclusive or, but this might be not. I'll try it because then I can do not eight. We'll see if that works. So that would set all the bits except for the third bit. Otherwise, I'll just have to write it, you know, do it myself. The funny thing is, says Refly, that they removed the Windows key between Control and Alt. So gamers, gamers, love love the quotes there. Don't accidentally press it. But people like to keyboard a lot. Hot, hot wire it to the other win key. <laughs> Weird. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've been known to just remove those keys completely. I mean, I, I, I've removed the, I have the caps lock key removed on this keyboard. Sick and tired of hitting it by mistake. I can st I can stick my finger in the, in the hole for the caps lock and turn caps lock on if I really want to. <laughs> anyway, where was I? Because oh, error. Uh, line 420, 420, yeah, 420, yeah, that doesn't like that. So I, I'm going to just have to do F7, uh, that will be the same. Let's try that. I'm not impressed with the fact that 
the ship blew up when I refueled with letter A. That's, uh, that suggests that I have a... Well, at that time it worked. Uh, I have a refueling bug. I'll not worry about that for now. So um, when I hit... Sh I, I should have a sprite... Look! I'm getting there. See? Oh, getting there. Press the fire button. But now I need to make it actually shoot in the right direction and from the right place. Alan says, on the Mac, I change caps to control. Never had a use for caps lock. Yeah, I, I, I hardly ever have use for caps lock either. Well, maybe... Yeah, but the, the, there can be times when you need it, so I, I'm, I, I don't remap it for that reason. Could happen. One, one of my hobby horses is that, as if I don't have enough of them, is that, um, please, could somebody invent a keyboard and make it a standard that has single buttons for copy and paste? I mean, please, is that too freaking much to ask? If we carry on like this, you know, in a in, in hundred years' time, humanity will have evolved into tw with hands all twisted, or at least the left hand all twisted like this. Specially designed to fit there so that you can do copy and paste efficiently. <laughs> Dear God. All right, so let's get to this shooting. Um, I can enable the shot, and then I need to set the position. Let's set the position now. Why not? We enable the we enable the shot, and when we load the position of the ship, so I do load a uh, sprites. Uh, X high, is that high? That's it, X high. Um, and then plus uh, ship index. And so with that ship index, right, with that X coordinate of the ship, I store it into the shot index and then I do the same for the Y and and now what will happen is when I hit the fire button when <laughs> need to re uh, it doesn't restart automatically yet so let's see let's try not to crash into any letters but when I press that can you see that I, it's carrying the shot with it? So it's like, oh, like kickoff, except with well, the ball stuck to your foot. Because, of course, it's only detecting if the. It keeps basically re triggering the position every frame. Because now I need to do the L fun thing of I need to detect the uh, moment when the press occurs, for which I need to have uh, another um, variable here. So I'm going to do here previous uh, fire state. And it's just a byte. That the previous fire state and B002, there we go, we want it to uh, only, we want to check if, if it has just been pressed. So what happens there is we check the flag, uh, we check the button, if the button is not pressed, 
hey, the button is not pressed, that's fine. If the button is pressed, we need to check if the button was already pressed. So I do load a um, fire. Oh. There was a little spike in viewers there for a moment. It went up to like 10 people all of a sudden with no explanation. And then it went away again. I wonder if that was the algorithm. And the algorithm said, let's try these people. No, they will hate it. Well, we'll try again in about, I don't know, a year. <laughs> um, load a fire. Why is that not autocomplete not working? I thought I just added. Oh, previous fire state. That's why I forgot what I called it. Load a previous fire state. Now, if the previous fire state is uh, not equal, it means that we were previously firing. In which case, we also branch to SS1. So, in other words, don't fire if the previous fire state was firing. Um, actually, I'm going to change this to SS2 because if the button is not pressed, then I need to clear the previous fire state. Store a oh, store a previous fire state and then RTS. So in this way we go. All right, check. What was it pressed? No, it wasn't pressed. Therefore, we can clear the previous fire state. Otherwise, yeah, that is pressed. But we check the previous fire state, and you know, previous fire state was true. So we just don't do anything. So the only way it gets to here is if the previous state was cleared and now we are firing. I just need to, uh, I can just do an increment of previous fire state so that's non-zero. That will, that will probably work. Let's see. Now, with a bit of luck when I run this, oh yes. It just shoots once, so that's all good. Now we just need it to go in the right direction. So to go in the right direction, I need to get the direction of the ship. So I'm going to load that, whatever I called that. Maybe I should just split here. I can just look at my variables. Where are we? We are looking at um, um, the ship. Um, where did I put it? I don't remember where the ship direction is. Ship. Ship direction. It's called ship direction. It's like, well, duh. Um, why don't I just go with ship direction? So we load the ship direction. And so that's a number between 0 and 15, because there are 15 directions. Um, but you know there would be better to load it into X, I think. I have a direction table somewhere. This is the direction table right here. So um, it actually makes sense to load this not into uh, A, like I just did, but load it into X. So we load it into X, and then I can load a the directions X. It's a the X direction for a particular direction, right? Basically, I'm taking an angle between naught and breaking the circle into sixteen different directions, and for each one, I have an X and Y coordinate or vector. So I can just take that comma X. Right, and then I store it in sprites. Uh, not 
No, this table works differently to other tables because otherwise it was a nightmare to set it up. I have to do a arithmetic shift left of the... Um, so which means I have to load it into the... I have to load the ship direction into the accumulator and I have to shift it left because I need to multiply it by two. Then I can transfer it into the X register where then I can read out the um, low byte of that, store it into the low byte of the shot, shots index. I'm hardwiring it for one at the moment. And then uh, we can take this plus one, because the second one is the low byte in this table, it's in pairs here. So we take the low byte of the table and we, do, we, we need to store this. No, the low byte's first. So this is the high byte. I mean, into the high byte. Or something. So with a bit of luck now when I shoot. Aha. Uh -huh. That was a failure. Let's try again. Oh. You can see something firing at the top there, but it's not quite working. So let's... Oh, um, because I put it into the position instead of into the velocity, which is a bit silly. And I actually have to do four of these. Let's try this again. X. Velocity. Low. X plus one. Velocity high, which is actually X velocity. We need to do directions Y. Store it into W low. And then directions Y plus one. You need to store it into W high. Now let's try that again. So with a bit of luck. We should actually have shooting now. Ha! <laughs> but it's totally logical. It's getting sh it's getting shot at the same speed as the ship, so they travel together. So obviously, the shot needs to be faster, which means we need to multiply by two because I can't, I'm not going to use anything else. You tend to just do everything by two. You multiply, divide by two, because that's all you can do. 6502, 8-bit. You don't have divide or multiply instructions. So, so that informs the game design, right? And you do uh, logical shift left, immediate one. No, that's 68,000 code. Logical shift left. Logical shift left, logical shift left. So what I'm doing is multiplying all of those coordinates by two. And now when I shoot and I'm traveling forward, I will get errors. Um, what's wrong? 440, I it 4433, three. logical shift, it's because this instruction is, no, seriously. It's because they're, Arithmetic shift left, Dino. There is no logical shift left. That's 68,000 as well. <laughs> I'll try again. All right. Now, uh, let's fly this fly this around. I fly it around and then I, I shoot. And this is the firing mechanic of the original game. I need to tidy it up a bit. Oh, that's a bit buggy. Not impressed with that. That was good. We have to test all the directions. Direction zero. Oh, there's bugginess there. Direction one doesn't work. Why does direction one not work? So I'm just 
checking load from the directions x table I took the ship direction and I multiplied it by 2 and I transferred it into x and then I pull this and this plus 1 you store it, you load it, and you store it into the x velocity and y velocity. <sighs> that should be good. I don't see what the problem is. So what do we do? We don't have any debugging facilities. We hardwire the direction. So I'm just going... No! <laughs> No, I just spotted it. It's all very well and good for me to get that. No, 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 no. It was fine. I did do the. I'm starting to get all right here. Look, I load the ship direction. I arithmetic shift left, right, and then I do eight left, right, and then I do uh, transfer A to X. What I will do is hardwire the load of the ship direction. Oh, this is direction zero. I'm going to have to test it like this for a minute. So when I fire, the shot goes in direction zero. Now, when I tried moving the ship in direction one, it didn't work. And it's true, it still doesn't work. So that's odd. Arithmetic shift left, it will make it two. Two hundred and fifty six times one over two, one hundred and twenty eight on the low bite. Okay. Um, Let's um, hardwire it even more. So this would be the low in the X. Let's make that 128. And a zero on the high one. And then when we're dealing with the Y velocity, uh, minus one, no, zero for the low, and minus one for the high. Right, so that's interesting. Of course, it's hardwired at the moment to be the same speed as the ship. If so what this suggests is that there's something wrong with the table. Arithmetic shift left. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can see the values in the table. It's it's taking the value 256 times a half, which is 128, and writing it in two bytes. Because this two bytes here, because this is what this means, it's 16 bits. So... Two bytes. The low byte would be 128, and the high byte would be zero. Okay. And that is. That's got me a bit stumped. I'm looking at that and going, what's wrong with that? No, is there anything wrong with that? 
the hardwired one works fine. Did something corrupt the table? Did Dino do too much ranting? Okay, what can I do to um, check this out even more? All right, there is something I could do. I can back this off. Put this back to, you know, remove the hard wiring. Yeah, that's, that's the weird thing that's going on with that. Let's see if it's to do with the multiply by two, because maybe that has unexpected. Oh. It is the, it is the multiply by two. Oh, because I'm multiplying a two byte value by two. I can't do that with a single shift of one instruction. And in fact, what's happening is, is the 128 gets shifted over and becomes zero because it moved on to the... Right. The fix for this is a pitter. Nope. Not so bad. Yep, I can do it. It's fine. Right, so what we do is we load the low byte into the accumulator. We do an arithmetic shift left, which is just moving the bits one bit that way. We store the result in here as we were doing, which is absolutely fine. And all we need to do is when we come to the high byte, we do a roll left instead of an arithmetic shift left, which because when you do the shift left, it shifts the bits that are shifted out of the byte into the carry flag. And then with a roll instruction, you actually can shift it back from the carry flag into the next byte. So in fact, the, the fix is just to do a roll here. It's not a pitter at all. I think that will fix it. Let's try that. And there we are. So we have shooting, crudely. Right, now, um, what's annoying is how the shot is not actually in the center of the sprite. Yeah, yeah. We need to change the offset a little bit. So when we do the shooting, we go and store it into, right, load A. Right, we need to do clear carry, add with carry, add with carry, immediate four. And we need to do that on the Y as well. And now I think it will be in the right place. Let's see. Ah, ah, out of control. Right. That's better. The alignment is a lot better. Still a little off, which is annoying. I, I, if I want to correct that more, I'll need to use a table where the initial position depends on the initial position depends on the direction. In fact, I probably need to do that anyway because I, I probably want the shot to come out from the muzzle of the, 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 the nose of the ship and not the center of the ship. 
But I'm not going to do that right now. That's a tweak we can do later. So, our original design had two shots available from the ship, and they would re trigger. Yeah. Of course, that shot is also sort of flying forever right now. I haven't tried to clean up all the letters for a bit. Uh... Oh, right, okay. There is a bug um, about trying to refuel when you're partially in the safe zone. So I will deal with that. Shall we make the um, shot have a limited lifespan? That's probably a good idea. So for that, I need to know how long the um, shot has been around for. And... Um, means more bits, doesn't it? I suppose... Sprite's flag, Sprite's image. I don't know, I'll just use Sprite's image for a shot. I can repurpose them for this. So this is Sprite's image, or it's the... Um, the uh, timer, the... Uh, what's it? Time to die uh, life timer shot timer I'll call it so what a shot what I mean by that is um, the thing that tells us how long before the uh, shot will stop so if you're a, because the shot isn't really a sprite and the sprites have their image. I repurpose it. It's like a union, right? And I can just reuse these. So when I, in ship shooting, when I do that, I need to do load the shot time. Let's just go with 256 um, frames for a minute. So I'm just going to load A with zero and store it in the... shot timer uh, comma X for this particular shot we have that stored in there great now for the update of the shots Well, I have the draw shots routine. Oh, what happened to sprites? Thank you. I think that should be long in here. This is game code, right? So, let's uh, do shots update. So we load, I could probably just load X with that, and then we're going to um, decrement X, transfer X to A, compare with the shots index, and then if the and we need to continue the loop dot su1 and if the branch branch of carry flag branch of carry okay yeah so branch of carry set dot su1 
or RTS. Right, so now we can process every single shot. And what we're going to do is see if the shot is enabled. Sprites flags and immediate eight branch if not equal dot su2 because if that bit is set it means the sprite is disabled dot su2 okay now if the sprite is enabled we want to decrement the counter which I can do using um, shot timer comma x so we decrement the shot timer now I started it at zero so I've had decrement it's no longer zero if after decrementing it is zero then that will be 256 frames have gone by so I can do branch if equal dot su2 so just carry on to the next one otherwise in here it means that my shot should stop so I can disable the shot. Um, I may need to clear the shot, but we'll see about that in a minute. But anyway, right. And so we do load a sprites flags and immediate dollar F7. So that will clear. No, oh, what am I talking about? Or immediate eight, because I'm setting that bit. <clears throat> store a sprites flags and that should be a timer now on my shot so we'll see what we do we go uh, we get errors 526 Or A is the instruction. And I was, whenever I did the Or A instruction, I always think of ORAC from Blake 7. Doesn't seem to be well because of this classic routine, uh, the classic thing. You you create a whole function, then you forget to call it. It's a, it's a classic. Uh, let's call it in update ship, update sprites. Let's do it. Um, I'll do it here actually. Up JSR update shots. Is, I'm sure I called it that, didn't I? No. What did I call it? Always a problem remembering what you did. What did it do? I, I called it something, didn't I? Oh, shots update. It's like update shots. Okay, so every frame we update the shots. Now, with a bit of luck, I collected an A. Right? We fire. It should disappear. It should stop. Is it? Will it? No. That didn't work too well. We'll do uh, update shots and check that out. What have I done? I've loaded X with the last shot and then we do what we do here. I'm not disturbing the X register. I decrement X and then I compare. Maybe I got that wrong. Yeah, it's the wrong way round again. It should be branch of carry set, not carry clear. Right, try again. And when we fire, come on, stop. Really? Uh, it's still not working, is it? Did I actually compile it? I can't believe that's still not working. Oh, 
Weird. Where did I get two shots from? Three shots? What? What? How is that possible? That's not possible. Is it? That was a bit confusing. <laughs> I thought the other sprites were disabled. I'm not using the other sprites. Uh, that was that was really quite. I thought I'd hardwired the shooting to one sprite, and so now how 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 can we end up with like I I'm I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I have to recreate that. I I I'm, I haven't started doing multiple sprites yet. Um, it's connected with the timeout. Oh, and it's slowing down. Oh, and loads of weird things are happening. <laughs> Corruption. <laughs> um, that's bad. Oh, well. I do have a mistake here. It should be sprites, flags, comma, X, and that's probably it. I was writing to other sprites. So let's try again. Hard mode, yeah. Oh, look at that. Mine. It dropped a little mine. So there's an idea as well. I could have in 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 um, Letteroids 2, we could have a mine. You could drop mines to catch the the Greek letters. I'll be shooting at you. It's um um yeah, yeah. branch if carry. This is this routine here is broken. I think that's a fa fairly good um, conclusion. So let's uh, do the usual thing over here. I still have four num shots. Number of shots are four. I'm going to change it so I only have one shot. Hey Shadow, how are you doing? Letteroids 2 can't be called Letteroids though the software published will likely have copyright over the name by then. But why? I don't understand. Letteroids was published. Ah, yes. Uh, I was the developer of it. In fact, actually the original game that was published in 1980 I think was Astro... Astro Warrior, and it was published with different sprites. And I could try and find it and then run it, and I could run it in the emulator, right? But um, I'm, I'm not referring to it at this time. Um, so the game was published with different skin, was reskinned because they didn't like the letters, which is insane, but whatever. Um, and uh, was called Astro Warrior. But um, I did Letteroids 3D uh, about 15 years ago or something, I don't know, 10 years ago. And it was a 3D sort of version. It was with, with um, it was a version of the game with, um, 
in uh, in Unity. And uh, I I also did release a version of Letteroids on a web page some time ago. I don't know what happened to that. So I'm doing a remake of my own game. So I should probably be all right. Oh, that, yeah, well, you know, what can you do? If you, there's always, there's always somebody waiting to kill the goose that lays the golden egg. <laughs> or golden football. Uh, why would I do, why would I do that? You didn't do anything wrong. I thought that you didn't, I didn't know you were referring to that. It's like, it, I thought that seriously you were saying that Letteroids, that the, the original developer slash publisher of Letteroids might be upset. And I was just saying, no, well, I actually wrote it. So, I don't know. Why would I tell you to F off for that? I would, not at all. More than welcome here. Uh, <laughs> so, where were we? Uh, do you get? I, I, yeah, I, you know, uh, I do, I don't know if you view it as a lesson. I suppose I suppose so. Um, as for me, it's it's a bit a bit. It's extreme nostalgia. I'm trying to reconnect with how I learned programming in the first place. And it's a very interesting study because then I see the differences and similarities. And there's actually more similarities to the modern uh, modern programming, modern game development. I think that's, but there's also something else that's a shame is that we never, you take the Acorn Atom as a very primitive machine. I mean, it was cutting edge at the time. Um, the BBC Micro is much more sophisticated, right? But I don't think we ever really got everything we could get out of the Atom. And you got a bit of that with... Um, this is something is a bit was always a bit confusing. It's like if you take like the video game industry and PlayStation. So the PlayStation One came along, and it was like the big companies saying we're making games, we're making games for PlayStation, we're going to make games for PlayStation, big budgets, big teams, all this stuff. And at the end of the life of the PlayStation, where everybody's now we're going to do PlayStation Two, there are people who are pushing the hardware of the previous generation generation to its limit. And they can do amazing things with the same hardware. And it's a bit of a shame that before we managed to get everything we could out of a platform, the platform is obsoleted. It's, it's, it is a shame. Um, I think it's a little bit less relevant now because the differences in the hardware are almost becoming irrelevant. It's like, it's a box. It does computing -y things. It's like, there's something very nice about doing uh, programming for, cu you know, custom hardware programming or custom hardware, but, you know, sp to the hardware, programming to the hardware as we always used to do. And when people don't do that anymore, then we lose the sk we lose skills, skills that are applicable to, you know, programming in general, at least that's my argument. Anyway, what am I waffling on about? I don't know. I've just changed the number of shots to one because then there's less confusion, theoretically. We can see that it just lays an egg. The second time, it stands an image of itself the third time it lays an egg. Did the first egg disappear? I can't remember. Hey Vincent, how are you doing? Welcome. I don't know. Egg? 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 Egg
egg. <laughs> That's a bug. It, it, it shouldn't do that. But did it disappear? Or was that my imagination? Oh, right. When I press it again. And now it, <laughs> it starts stamping itself down. It's some really weird bug. Oh, did you see it? Check it's corrupting memory. That no doubt about it. You know, it's. Uh, I saw it change a letter. For some reason, you cannot subscribe. Hey, Bolero, hi there. You can't subscribe. What is the is the algorithm that hates me? The YouTube algorithm hates me so much. It's preventing you from subscribing. What what what's going on here? I'm um I'm just going to try I don't know. Is it that the YouTube algorithm has decided that I've done I'm doing too well? I don't know. Here yeah, really what is Really? <clears throat> Let me just check if I've got any notifications. I'm just so sick of this game. It's like what is going on? Now I don't seem to have any notifications. There should be a... Maybe the algorithm runs on an ST, yeah, probably. I probably said something that upset the algorithm. What? Um, the thing is, is I can't see because I'm just, I, I can't see my own channel. <sighs> that is, um, that is, that's annoying. Okay. What I would suggest is because t this is a good evening for me, right? Good evening. Um, it, it, it's like I've, I've had an unusually large number of people subscribing. Now, we're not talking about, you know, something crazy here. I mean, you know, almost, you know, like double digits. It's possible that the algorithms uh, at YouTube have got freaked out. It sort of set off some alert or something. It says... This person who, 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 you know, gets like one subscription every 13 years has suddenly got 10 in a row, you know. Um, so all I can suggest is keep trying, but let me know. Um, hi, hi there, Aris Slab. How are you doing? Bolero, Vincent, anybody else? Yeah, that is very odd. I really would appreciate it. I know I never say this. And the other day I said the last thing I want is for people to be following me. But I was being philosophical. Um, you know, it's sort of like a bit frustrating if the system doesn't let, let that happen. Maybe it depends on the browser. <laughs> Maybe it does. If somebody figures this out, let me know. I'll try again tomorrow. I'm I'm been streaming every day, so we'll see how it goes. I might have to create a fake uh, account on YouTube to see if I can um, subscribe. <laughs> Is the browser wars all over again now? Um, right, so this is really weird because what I have is um, a corruption from what should be very innocuous code, really. But look, <laughs> the letters are turning, <laughs> speeding up. Uh, you know, yeah. This is. Um, 
definitely a corruption. I think I need to just check. I'll let it run a bit and see if it could be that it's just corrupting itself. And I think it's me trying to shoot things. Hey, Gabriel, how are you doing? From Texas. It's uh, 12 minutes past 11 here. Oh, no, they go forward tomorrow night. Oh, I hate that. I hate that with a passion. I, I, if people are having trouble subscribing, the only thing I can I can think is is what I said that it's an unusually large number in a batch, and uh, they're probably uh, flagged something. So now they're going to make sure that there isn't some kind of weirdness going on, because you know how it is. Um, they want you to succeed. <laughs> uh, Anyway, um, it doesn't seem to be crashing. So what is wrong? Uh, I'm going to look at that that shoot algorithm. Explode wherever I put it over here. <laughs> Ship shooting. It wasn't that that was the problem. It was the um, the shot life that was the problem. Shot timer. Oh. Okay. You know that I'm using the shot timer uh, to double up on, you know, on the shots for how long they live for. But I'm doubling it up with the sprites image, and we saw that when I was shooting, it was corrupting which image was connected with which sprite. So that means, yeah, there's some memory overwrite here. Store a shot timer, shot timer, comma, X. Oh, I haven't set up the X register yet. I was hardwiring everything. There it is. I think I, I think I found the corruption. Yeah. <laughs> I've. You know what, um, Shadow? It's like releasing the album. It got the whole album thing got rather disrupted by COVID. The whole COVID thing. And then um, I started releasing singles, but my I will continue with the music, but the motivation for doing it, where uh, you you know I have like ten listeners on Spotify, I have uh, if if a video I spend hours making those videos, and um, if the video gets 150 views, it's doing well. It's the same for everybody. Um, who does these things really, except for a minority? So the the motivation for it is a little di diminished, but you know it goes in waves. It's it's like if I feel like doing it, I will do it. All I can imagine is that if I was to release. You know, I've released a few songs that would be on the album, but if I was to release that album, it would be just like... <laughs> and so... <laughs> Tuna salad instead of beef. Why, why is that surprisingly? These are not ASCII characters. They're on an 8x8 um, grid. And... They're moving pixel resolution because the sprite engine is able to sort of rotate the uh, sprite images. Um, let me see if I've got the corrupt if the corruption is uh, uh, is gone. Oh god, I keep crashing into the letters. Is 
So with a bit of luck, that yeah, that would explain it. I mean, it was just some un. It was effectively random where it was writing before. I saw something happen over there, didn't you see? Oh no, I know what that is. That's a bug with the fuel bar, the fuel gauge. Oh, I see, I see what you mean. So, normally it's all turf and no surf, right? Okay, that is not supposed to, by the way, sort of be stationary. It's because it's dying immediately. Well, at least it's not corrupting the game uh, anymore. why it's timing out immediately right now. Music and coding are keeping stress levels low, so it doesn't matter how many people are listening. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. It doesn't matter how many people are watching, though it does. It is. It's like anything, though. It's like I mean, I've performed with my band to an empty room before now. <laughs> it was a great performance too. Uh, anyway, um, we recorded it. Update shots. I, it dies immediately. Why does it die immediately? Because that is the wrong way around, should be branch, if not equal. I think I have it. Right. Is it timing? I guess it's working. That's, well, I took a bit longer than it should have done. But basically... Uh, shot, and then... It's disabled. I need to make it disappear. It's certainly long enough. We, we don't need it much longer than that, right? <laughs> 256 frames. So the only thing I need to do now is when I disable the sprite, I need to undraw the sprite as well. Yeah, I think I'll make a modification to draw shots for this purpose because here I check to see enabled. And here is there anything to clear? Well, maybe what I should do is always check if there is anything to clear. Then when I did. Um, I'm going to take that out a minute and put that back. So is there anything to clear? If there is something to clear, then we clear, which is what's going on here. Blah, 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 blah. Actually do the clear. And once we get to here, then we see if it's enabled. Because the check to see if we need to clear is very, doesn't cost much at all. And if it's not equal, then it means it's disabled. Come on, not equal is disabled. I'm losing all the markings on my, I've worn out my keys. I look at the keyboard, it distracts the hell out. I shouldn't look at it. Um, DSH4, like so. And maybe um, it will now 
disappear. Oh. That's a bit of a shame. Why didn't it disappear? It should have gone through and done that and here and said that branch if equal to it clears if there is something to clear. Then it checks if it's enabled and if it isn't enabled it skips it. That is confusing me, why that's not working. Yeah, it didn't change a thing. Now, I would have thought it would have changed that thing. Take care, Shadow. Thanks for joining in have a good good weekend um, yeah so if it is enabled you should get a recording of the goats bellowing and sample you know make samples out of them and then release some music and and you could release an album and call it the Bellowing Goats of Texas. And it's got a certain ring to it, hasn't it? The Bellowing Goats of Texas. I think you're going to be rich. I'm sure Jeff Minter would approve. Why does that not work? I mean, if I go disabling the, if I go disabling that sprite, it's still going to come here and see there is something to clear. I want to have it. I want to have it sort of clean itself up automatically. If I go turn the sprite off, and you can see that when I run a new, a new sprite, it it does clear itself from its previous position. Oh. Oh, it could be that. Because when I... I didn't spot that. When I clear the sprite, I should also clear the high byte of... I, 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 need, I need to oh, make the drawer address null. I can do that here. Um... Load A, immediate zero, store A. Clear draw address. I think what's happening is it's doing it every frame and so then it stays on the screen. That's a little bit disturbing. <laughs> ah. ah, pretty. It's pretty though, isn't it? Those, those. That's not what should have happened. That's because I've lost the X register that I had. Um, I need to do... Okay, I know, I know how I can do this properly. I have to load that 
and I store it in 83 and I load and store it in that will do I think Ow. All right, let's see. We're going to disappear. Oh. It didn't disappear. That was a good theory, but um It was a good theory, but it wasn't right. Load shot previous address branch if equal DSH2. That's because it was null. So the address, there is an address. It means there is a sprite on the screen. And that means that I don't like this. You know, I'm trying to be too clever here and I can't be bothered to try and debug why that doesn't work. Um, I'm going to undo what I did. I think I've gone too far. Put it back to that. What I'll do is make a new machine, a new machine, a new function called clear shot. We pass in x index of sprite and um, Why is it doing that? It's jumping to there. Really annoying. I don't want you to jump there. So if I'm going to do that, I need to um, simply do this bit. I just copy this little fragment. It checks high byte of the previous draw address. If there is nothing to clear, then we just branch to dot cs2 because there's nothing to clear and rts otherwise it sets it up and clears it a simple little routine i give it the index of the sprite i want to clear and i probably should clear that address like i was saying before so store a83 load a immediate zero Store a that should just compile and um, what I can now do is say uh, clear shot so this is update shots when we disable it we can clear shot JSR clear shot so by doing that, hopefully, you know, it will disable the sprite, but it will also call the clear function for the sprite. So let's see. Da 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 disappear please. There we go. That's better. It's better than messing around, trying to be clever. Oh, I thought it had failed, but it was that it was some guy did sampling with a video clip of goat bellowing while a while back with memes added. It is a good idea though. Yeah. Why not? We could do a video game about it. You have to go to Texas and collect the sounds of blaring or whatever it is, sheep I was going to say, goat. And then you could sell them. 
because uh, they're all every single every single sound that you record of a goat bellowing is unique. So it's like NFTs, isn't it? You could just you could, you could be rich. You can have a whole banking system based around the variations in the sounds of goats. It would make as much sense. So I, um, this this is working now, except the, it's probably just the lifespan of the shop is probably just a little bit exaggerated here. So we'll just reduce that. Ship shooting. Shop timer. Oh, what should we have? Two seconds per, per 100, 100 and 135. I don't know. I'll try. Do, 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 do. I think that's uh, not bad. We'll leave it like that for now. Um, why is there noise on the screen? That's bad. That should not happen. Oh well, I'll fix everything. So um, I suppose the next thing is to set it up so that, you know, this whole ship shooting thing, I've hardwired the shots index. We should know how many sprites we have. I want to have a kind of, you want to make it so you can have two sprites in flight at the same time. So I need to keep account of that. So we had the previous fire state here, and then we're going to do ship shot count. So the ship shot count, I need to say that carefully. The, the ship shot count is. Um, going to be zero or one or two depending on how many shots we have in flight so the other thing then is that all of these plus shot indexes I need to change that so that I've got an uh, using the X register this is all required to so let's just separate this off a little bit this is the detection maybe put some comments this is the detect fire button and so at this point the fire button was pressed then we need to figure out which where we're at with um, shooting which which sprite do we use so if I do load a whatever I called that it's forgotten already Um, I'm looking at the one, I can't find it in there because that file isn't, there's the wrong file. Huh. I was going, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, that's an obsoleted file. I'm, there's a, I'm looking in the wrong place. So, um, right. The ship shot count. So if we load the ship shot count into A, and then um, if we could have zero, one or two shots, If we compare this, we 
with oh uh, load it. I suppose we could just increment it. I'll increment the ship shot account and then I load it and then I'll um, compare it with so uh, the first time I shoot it was zero it will now be one no, that's not very good let's try it the other way around I'm going to load the ship shot count and then increment it and so now I have the previous value so if the previous value is 0 or 1 it's fine however if the previous value is 2 so we do branch if um, zero or one it's going to be uh, the carry flag is going to be it's a branch of carry set which means that it's fine it will be zero or one Is that right so I'm getting tired now <laughs> branch if branch if the carry flag is going to be clear if it's zero or one Right, so we go to say SS3. I haven't used that label yet. So we compare it with that. If it's zero or one, it's fine. But if it's two, then I need to load a with zero and store it back in to the ship shot count. So the first time that I run it, that will be zero, then I increment it, it become I load the zero into the accumulator, I increment it, it becomes one. I compare it with two. Um, oh, but after I increment it's how many shots we have, it should, it should be compared with three. So when I try to have three shots, then it says, oh, hang on, um, that's too many. And then it resets the ship shot count back to... Uh, uh, I need to know which one I was doing. This is... I think I'm getting tired here. What time is it? 23.40. Uh, I'm run out of steam. Because th I'm doing this, I'm doing this after after doing a full day's work. Um, so <laughs> What's that, Gabriel? I've used different flavours of basic, but I like BBC Basic for the Acorn. It made some simple, I made some simple programs in Beedroid and Acorn emulator app for Android. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Well, BBC Basic was a very good basic. It certainly was. Okay, everybody, it's been really exciting. I mean, you know, I've got. I, 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 there was a spike of like 13 people on here. That wasn't bad for me. That was good. I appreciate you dropping by and I appreciate you supporting my crazy world. I'll um, I'll be back again over the weekend, but I'm out of steam, so I'm going to stop now. Um, but yeah, it was good work and uh, yeah take care everyone where is that thing oh there it is <laughs>